Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so good. Can we just praise the Lord for our worship team, for the department? Oh my goodness. God is amazing. God is amazing. If you're watching, we welcome you. We welcome you to share, to invite people in, to come on in. We have our notes in you version, and you can check in in the app. I'm so glad that you are all here today. I just thank the Lord. Can we just, as we're standing, stand in honor and thank God for our pastors. They are such a gift. I am so thankful for who they are what they do in our lives. I'm not the pastor here for any first time visitors. My name is Eliza Ray and I have a word to share, but please come back to hear our pastors. Our pastor did a wonderful series on choosing life. And it was such a powerful and beautiful message. I also want to thank the Lord for my husband. Lord Jesus, I thank the Lord for my husband. Seriously, you guys, will hear me brag on him because I would not be who I am today without the Lord putting that man in my life. He, he, is, he is obedient to the word and washing his spouse in the word of the Lord. And I am so thankful for you, baby. You are a king. I love you. And I'm thankful for you. Shout out to my kids, Carver and Arrow, my baby boys, and my brother, Devante, who came here to visit and who will, will be here with us. Thank the Lord for him. You all may be seated. Let's get into it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, God is good. Tell, say hey to a neighbor. Say hey, friend. Say bless you. Ask them, you ready to receive this word today? Say prepare your heart because Eliza be doing too much sometimes. We can get us together. <laughs> Y'all, this has been a time of great exposure, has it not? Great exposure. The things that have been done in the dark, in the hidden places, in the quiet places, they are coming to the light. And we see it happening in the world, right? With the celebrities, <laughs> with, with some of y'all's favorite artists getting exposed, okay? A lot of uh, hidden things being uncovered, but also it's happening even within the church. There's been a lot of moral failure right here in the house of God. And God is doing something mighty through this exposure. And sometimes we can look at it and be like, mm, wow, mm-hmm. See, I knew that was going on, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We, can, we can have that posture, but there is a posture that we as the people of God need to take in time of great exposure because nothing can be exposed without the light of God. Amen. He is the one who exposes. He is the one who reveals. He is the one who displays and shows the hidden things. Exposure, biblically defined, means to reprove, to rebuke, to discipline, to show to be guilty properly, to convince with solid compelling evidence, especially to prove wrong. Things are being exposed. They're being revealed. But something that I want us to realize about exposure is that although it seems like shaming, it seems condemning, it seems just wild for, for the hidden things to be on display publicly, that it, it is it's really rooted in the absolute love of God. It's rooted in God's loving desire to usher his people out of darkness. It's rooted in God's loving desire to show his people that the things that they love in the world are actually rooted in darkness. So that you, by his power, by his spirit, will come out of those, those things, will detach yourself in love from those things that are not in connection to him. God is so good to reveal the hidden things. He is so merciful in doing so. In John 3, Jesus, right after the amazing scripture, for God so loved the world 
you can say it with me, that he gave only begotten son, that he should not perish, come on, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. This, I, I want us to just even think about that. I, we we kind of say that scripture and it's like, oh, for God so loved the world that he gave. What kind of love is that? What kind of love does it take for you to be willing to sacrifice your own son for a world and for a people who choose darkness instead? What kind of love does it take? That's such a powerful and a beautiful love to lay down the life of your own son. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus, for your love. And he did it so that we would not perish, but we would have eternal life. You know, it, it even says in scripture, the Lord says, he does not delight in, in, when the wicked perish. He takes no delight in the death of the wicked. It is his great desire, even in the exposure, that all turn to him in light. But in that scripture, Jesus tells Nicodemus, he's having this conversation, the, the Pharisee comes to him at night in the hidden, because he didn't want his friends to see. He comes to him asking him questions and the Lord tells him, I didn't come here to condemn the world, but I actually came to save the world. But then he says, but this is the condemnation in John 3, 19 through 21. This is the condemnation. That light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So we have the glorious, beautiful light of the Lord Jesus Christ that bursts open the world with glorious and beautiful light. But in the midst of, of this coming light, men are condemned because they still choose darkness even in the face of such great light. He says, for everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest he, his deeds should be, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Already, we are seeing a function of the light of the Lord. And I told you that exposure is a mercy, but exposure is a function of the light. The light is what exposes. Jesus Christ came into this world as this glorious light, as this liberation king. People, we're, we're in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the sin, in the midst of absolute oppression and bondage. Here he comes for liberation but they choose darkness, why? The only way that someone would choose, that a, that a slave would choose to love his oppressor rather than the liberator is that they had to be deeply deceived. A major way that darkness is able to creep in, even into the church, is, is it, 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 what precedes it is deception. Every time. Deception births darkness. But before we get any deeper, I want to define some terms. Let's define some terms so you know exactly what I'm saying when I'm saying it. I told you that expo to expose means to reprove, to rebuke, to discipline, to show a compelling evidence, to, repute, to prove wrong. But if light is what exposes, then light is the rebuke and the proof. Light is the truth in the reality of the way. It is the reality of the kingdom and the frequency of the essence of God. That's what the light is. Light, it is purity. It's God's unadulterated truth. It's the presence of God's glory. It's revelation of the word. And it's Jesus Christ himself. That's what the light is. So as I declare this morning, let there be light, I'm declaring, let there be the word and the truth and the glory and the mercy of God in this, in this world. In the midst of darkness, I'm declaring, let there be light. But light comes to expose. Just some proofs that, that the, the light is the word. Jesus says in John, you don't have to turn here, but just calling out some scriptures. In 1 John 1, 5, this is the message we have heard from him. And we declare to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. 
John 8, 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I love the one in Psalms where it says, your word is the lamp to my feet and a light to my path. That his word is light. It gives us light and understanding. The word is the light. Jesus is the light. The presence of God is the light. And when God spoke the powerful and precious words in the beginning, let there be light. You know what happened? Light at quick speed rushed into the world. And the world, though it was it was totally in darkness. It said that there was waters on the deep, on the face of the deep, and it was totally darkness, but God spoke the words, let there be light. And it pierced, pierced the darkness, totally snatching the world out of the darkness that it was literally drowning in. And it illuminated the face of the earth, which gave the foundation in order to build God's kingdom. Light seeks to come as a foundation for the kingdom to be built. God is not going to build in darkness. He's going to snatch you out first. And out of the kingdom of darkness we come and into the kingdom of the marvelous son of his light, the son of his love. Of course, darkness is biblically defined as what? What are some things biblically defined as darkness? Shout it out, sin, evil, Wickedness, that's right. It's lies and confusion, right? It's the place where Satan dwells. Well, he, he dwells in the darkness. He loves those dark, hidden, secret places. He dwells there. But I want to define it really simply today because wherever there is darkness, there's just one, one issue. If it's dark, then light is absent. Darkness is the absence of light. I'm just building a foundation here. I want us to be on the same page. Y'all with me? Okay. It's, it's the absence of the light. So we see why God in the beginning said that it was good for darkness and light to be separated. It's good for those things to be separate. They're not to be mixed because if you mix light and darkness, they, they can't go together. I can't turn on the light and still dwell in the dark. I can't be in the light and still hold and and stay where there's darkness. And here's the thing. God wants his light to flood every area of our lives. There's some ways that we try to compartmentalize like, okay, God is invited here. God is invited here, but he wants every single area in your relationships, in the TV shows you watch, in the friendships you have, in the hidden and quiet things that nobody else knows about, just between you and him, he wants his light to flood there. And it needs to, so that the foundation of his kingdom can be established there. What's so powerful though, about how God separated light and darkness in the beginning is that he's doing the same thing here in the end. The way he started is the way he will finish it. In the beginning, he separated the light and darkness. And I'm here to tell you that's why we're seeing such exposure and we ain't seen nothing yet. That's why we are seeing such exposure because he wants you to clearly see what is darkness and what is light. And the reason why he does this is so that you are clear on your choice. You can either choose darkness and he's like, and let me make it clear, this is what is dark. Or you can choose light and he also makes that clear. He separates it. But guess what? Just like the Lord uses exposure so that you can choose life and death so that you can can see that there might be things that you love that are dark so that you can break away from it he chooses it and and does it as a mercy for your salvation guess what the enemy also loves exposure he don't mind a little exposure and let me tell you why because when you see that something that you've been loving or operating in or anything is actually dark, 
and you still choose the darkness, it literally gives him greater access for destruction in your life. So although the Lord will use it for your salvation, the enemy also will use it for your destruction. You know why? There's a spirit, a very important spiritual principle that is all about agreement and consent. Nehemiah, my husband, preached the first service. Please go back and listen. Who was in here? Yes. It was such a good word. Please go back and listen to the first service. It was so good. But here's the thing. It's agreement. Agreement is a spiritual principle. Consent is a very important spiritual principle. And what Nehemiah said was, there, there are, is a door, the door of your heart, the door of your soul. And the Lord is knocking, as it says in Revelation 3, but also sin is knocking. The enemy is knocking at the door. Whoever you consent to let in is who's going to get in. You have the power of consent. It even says, if you choose to believe, if you choose to open the door, then the Lord come in. He's not busting down your door. The enemy's also not busting down your door. And I think that that's good news for somebody because some people, oh, the enemy's just attacking me. Oh, all of this is going on, la, la, la. What is the door that is open in your life? Where have you given him access? He's not just busting down the door. He does not have the right. He needs your consent. And where have you consented to allow him to come in? I'm telling us we got to choose light. We have to choose light. Don't give him greater consent by seeing what is dark and still choosing it. Don't give him that right in your life. It's, it's, it's exactly what he did in the beginning, you know. This is exactly what the enemy did in the beginning. Remember I told you that Deception precedes darkness almost every time. Deception first. It precedes great darkness. So in the beginning, God created mankind. He created human beings to be light bearers. You know, he literally put us in the earth to be his light in the earth. We weren't made as, as something separated from him, but we were fashioned to flow from the frequency of the Father's light. We were fashioned to flow that way. And for those, I used to think that, like, I'm just a free thinker. I think on my own. I'm just a free thinker. Nobody's a free thinker. I'm going to bust that bubble. Nobody's a free thinker. At your design, you were created to have a mind that channels and a mind that flows from something higher and greater than you. From, from the very beginning, that's how we were designed. I mean, I'm, every word that's coming out of my mouth, I learned from someone bigger and higher than me. It's, it's, it's that simple. But when it comes even to the spiritual reality of that, because we are spirit, we have this body, these, but we're, very, we're spirit. In the spiritual reality of that, we were designed as vessels to take on something and flow, to take on something and flow from that. And so God literally, literally made us as an extension of himself. He said, here I am in the heavens. I'm designing the earth, but I'm also going to be in the earth and I'm going to be in the earth through man. I made you as an extension of me. You know, even in the beginning when Adam was naming the animals, I believe God gave him that because he knew. He knew. You're going to name them what I name them. You flow from my frequent. You flow from me. Your mind is connected to my mind. You know, Jesus even said that. Jesus, as he displays the, the, the perfect beauty of what this is, he says, I don't do anything I don't see my father do. Why? Because he knew I'm just here as a vessel. I'm just here as an instrument. I don't say anything. I, I didn't first hear my father say. So the whole world, right? In, in creation, God gets rid of the darkness, floods it with light, makes man in his image, makes them as light bearers. And then there's the enemy still in the midst of the garden. He had no access. 
He had no access where there was all this light. He can only dwell in darkness. He can only uh, uh, move in deception. So that's exactly what he had to do. To be able to have access to Eve, to be able to have access to our li- all of our lives, to the world, he had to first start with deception. Because the light is the truth. And to get rid of the light, the way to turn off the light, you have to add a little lie. He can't do anything where there's so much truth. So he had to get her to start believing that the light was a lie. God told them, don't eat from this. This, That's his word. The words are light. The words are truth. The word is the way, the truth, and the life. He tells her, don't eat of this. And the enemy's like, oh, I got to get her to doubt the word of God. I got to get her to question or to come out of agreement with what God said so that I can have access and so that she can begin to channel and flow from my frequency instead. You see? So he, he, he gets her to question, did God really say? Did God really say that? And then she comes out of agreement with the truth of the Lord and comes into agreement with the lies of a snake. I think it is so interesting that after they fell, when before they were living in freedom, walking with the Lord, walking just freely in the garden, there was no hiddenness. There was no, you were, it was, there was so much peace and connection. But when they fell, when they allowed something else to be in connection to their minds, when they removed God as their source, the source of what what they flowed from, and, and put Satan in that rightful place to flow different thoughts to them that were not of God, foreign thoughts, a foreign frequency, something outside of the Lord himself. The first thing they did was hid in darkness. They hid. And I can just imagine God like hiding. That's not something I do. You're doing something that is totally opposite of me. And then he's like, oh, oh, we were, we were hiding because, uh, because we're naked. Who told you that? That's a, it's a very powerful question. Where did you get that information from? Because you're not flowing from my frequency anymore. You're not flowing from the truth of my word, which is light. You got something else from somewhere else. I never said that. And because they received the messages, they entertained the darkness of the devil. They entertained the deception. They begin to do things that were opposite of what God does. Either you flowing from the frequency of a father, of the father, or you're flowing from the frequency of a foreign invader. You can't do both. And here's the thing. There are some areas in our life where it's like, yeah, I'm in connection to the father. Absolutely. And other areas where we think we're free thinkers. You're not freely thinking. You're flowing from the, from darkness or you're flowing from light. You have no other free thoughts. It's either or, right? Man, (laughs) I think pastor did such a great job in the series he just did. He stood up here and he shined. He shined light on the issues that we've been calling political all this time. These ain't political issues. That's a cop out. <laughs> That's a cop out. People, I don't talk about politics. These are not political issues. These are biblical and spiritual issues. And Pastor Gregory stood up here and he shined light on the areas of darkness in these issues. Should I tell him myself? I'm gonna tell him myself. I'm telling myself. There's one thing he said, right? That I was like, oh. all right, all right. I gotta come into agreement with the word. Should I tell y'all what it is or don't tell them? I'm gonna tell y'all what it is, okay? I have two beautiful sons, right? And I love my sons, love 
the Lord, right? Amen. <laughs> I'm like, am I going to tell myself? And I've always said, like, I want my sons to marry two beautiful black women. They have to marry black women. I'm raising my son to benefit a black woman like me. She, I want him to. And pastor said, if you have a problem with who they bring in because they don't look like you, you're racist. I said, oh. <laughs> I said, oh, oh, no. I said, Lord, forgive me. Because he clearly displayed it in the word, who God is and how he sees those things. And anything that pastor said that kind of hits you like, oh, what I'm encouraging you to do, and this is a way to respond in times of exposure, lean into it. Ask the Lord, what in me, where is there in me that I don't agree with you? Because that means I'm in darkness. See, darkness is where the absence of light. And if there's absence of the word and the truth of God in that area, then you're in darkness in that area. So that was an area where I was in darkness and the light shine. You know what happens when you've been in a dark room for so long? And then somebody comes and turns on the light. Don't it hurt? (laughs) It hurts. It's like, well, you lean away from it. You still try to hide from it. You still try to, you know, my, I turn on those lights and my sons, it's time to get up. They put the covers on. No, give me my darkness. <laughs> we have to take the covers off. Look at the face of the light. Allow it to shine on our face so that we can reflect it. Because when you receive the light, you'll reflect the light. If you receive it, then you'll reflect it. In every single one of us, there are hidden places of darkness. And it all starts with just a little disagreement with God. Pastor talks about abortion, but what if a woman is raped? What if this and that? Just a little disagreement. Did God really say that it was bad to kill a baby if? Did God really say? That's the question. He does it with everything. I want us to realize this. He does it with everything, every single thing, especially in the world, the the issues that they call political. Nah, these biblical and spiritual issues, and we better get in agreement with God on them. It's so important because guess what? Guess what? What happened when Eve, there was a little agreement with the enemy, and then the whole world was flooded with destruction. What have we allowed to come into our lives just because we don't fully agree with God? What are the things that are happening in our lives, in our world, that we just opened the door to destruction to come in because we chose not to agree? Go back and listen to that series with Pastor. If you haven't heard it, please go back and listen. And every time you wanna hit one of these because the light is shining too bright on that issue, Open them eyes and receive it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's, it can be tough to discern in our lives what's light and dark sometimes. It can be tough to discern it. That's why we need the word. We need messages like what we heard with Pastor And the reason why it can be tough is is because we were fashioned in darkness. Thanks, Adam and Eve. (laughs) We were raised in it. We were raised to be comfortable and familiar with what is foreign to God. So if all of my life I've been fashioned in something unfamiliar to the Father, and then the light shines in that area then we can finally be able to discern it. Remember what the word says in Proverbs, it's the way that seems right to a man that leads to destruction. Why does it seem right? Why does it seem right if it's destruction? Because we've been familiar with it for so long. And that's what I'm here to tell, like, it's the things that you've been familiar with, the the beliefs that you've just carried all of your life. Oh, my, all my family voted this way, so I just vote this way. I don't look at any, I don't look into see what the Lord is saying about it. That's just what we do. No, that's what's familiar to you. 
but allow the Lord to speak something unfamiliar to you that is truly familiar to him, but it's unfamiliar to you because you're in darkness in that area. Allow him to do that. In Ephesians, I love this scripture because it displays the three purposes of light. Jesus said, the judgment is the people choose darkness over light. And like I said, many of us just don't realize that the ways that we've been believing are dark. Light comes to reveal your source. Remember, you're either flowing from the Father or flowing from the enemy. And light will reveal your source. It'll show where your beliefs come from. And it will reveal why your actions are the way that they are. Nehemiah also, I'm going to keep referencing him from first service because it was so good. Talked about how our action, how our beliefs, our information will lead to our actions. What you believe will lead to how you live out in the world. So our beliefs are so important. We have to change our source, the source of our information has to be the word. It has to be the light of God. So Ephesians, it says, Ephesians 5 verse 8. For you were once in darkness, but now you are in the light of the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of life of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. I think that's so interesting that it tells we how to find out. We don't automatically know just because you're a believer, just because you've seen it done like this all this time. We don't know. We need to find out what pleases the Lord. And and the way that we find out, we find out what displeases him. This is an area of my life that displeases him. I need to find out what those areas are so that I can switch over to pleasing him in those areas of my life. And it says, having nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. Man, is that not? Just some of the stuff, I'm like, that's just shameful. That's just, you don't even want to say what what that saying is said. Like it just, it's shameful to even mention what the disobedient do in secret. But look at this. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible and everything that is illuminated becomes a light and this is why it said wake up sleeper rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you such a powerful scripture it's revealing to us that light does these three things one light exposes it reveals the hidden things right we've talked a lot about about the public display of exposure, but I'm asking you, what are the things that God wants to expose to you about yourself? Let him expose you in secret. Go to his face. The the, the public exposure is because the private exposure has been denied. When you keep denying him, allowing him to expose you in private and in secret where no one else is seeing and you allow the light of his word to flow in you and to enter into those hidden places. There's so much light there, but if you choose to deny it, he's going to have to go public with it. You're going to get found out. (laughs) Allow him to expose you to yourself in secret. Let him do that. Light exposes. That's the purpose of light. That's a mercy of God. It's not a bad thing to realize that is how we are sanctified. And I love what the scripture says about those who are sanctified. It says all who are sanctified are being, are perfected. All who are perfect, sanctified are perfect. How can we be both being sanctified and perfect? It's God's mercy. He chooses us. Our, our, our sin doesn't stop us from being in the position that he called us to be in. You are still seated high in glory. You are still called high. You are highly exalted. You are still loved by God. You are still seen by him, chosen by him, but he wants to get rid of the hidden darkness and allow him to do so. Light exposes. 
It exposes the areas that we have been comfortable and familiar with, the areas that we don't realize are actually dark that need to come out of our lives. Two, light illuminates. It illuminates. Remember what it says, that as the light shine, it illuminates. God doesn't just want to expose you by proving you wrong and just revealing your wickedness, but he wants to illuminate you by giving you revelation of the truth in that area of darkness in your life. You're illuminated when you agree with the word. It illuminates you. Look what happened to Moses on the mountain. He, he, he sees God for who he is and God is declaring words about who he is. He's like, I am merciful, I am God, I am compassionate, I am kind. All of these things. And Moses' face began to shine with glory as he received and believed who God was, as he received and believed the truth of the word. Even his own physical body began to change. This is a great time of transformation. Light is exposing, but it's also illuminating. It is making us brighter. It is making us more beautiful. It is transforming us into the image of the sun. But then light envelops. Light doesn't, it doesn't just want to expose and illuminate, but it wants you to become one with that light. We, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You're the one caused to expose. You're the one called to speak the truth of the word in time of darkness. You're the one called to do that. It's you. But you got to get rid of those hidden places in your own life. Today, listen, it is time. It is time. God is showing us. I'm separating the light in the dark. I don't want to be separated from the light. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be separated from the light because I've been flowing from an unfamiliar foreign voice. You know, in the end, when Jesus says he, he's separating the sheep and the goats and he tells them, I never knew you. Why did he never? Because you don't look familiar to me. Why don't you look familiar to me? Because you got too familiar with the foreign voice. The way to be familiar to God, the way to say, for him to say, I know you, welcome in, is because you've already been in connection with him all along. You've become the light. You didn't, you didn't shy away from it and go back under the covers when I displayed to you what is light and what is darkness in your life, in the world, in the systems. Lean into the light, come into the light. It's time, it's time, I feel it like a fire. That if we do not come into the light, there, there, there's, it's going to be more difficult to cross over. I'm telling you guys, the deception is going to get deeper. And where there's greater deception, there's greater darkness. Receive now and receive it as a mercy to come into the light in every area of your life. Don't give the enemy a foothold. Don't give him a place. Allow him to reveal to you where you need his light to shine because there's something so powerful and beautiful about becoming the light, that you will walk just as Christ walk in the earth. We need the ministry of Jesus that lays hands on the sick and they recover. The ministry of Jesus that casts out demons. The ministry of Jesus that declares the truth in the time of darkness. The ministry of Jesus that challenges religion that challenges just our, our same old practices, but never gets to truly know him. We need the ministry of Jesus Christ. And we can walk in that, every single one of us, we can walk in it if we would choose to become the light. So Lord, I declare in Jesus' name, let there be light. Let there be light in the hidden and dark places in our own lives. Let there be light, Lord, where we, we are shying away from it. We declare, let there be light. Let there be light in the world. Let there be light in our lives, in the lives of our family. God, we need your light. We need the power of your glory. We need the power of your presence to rush in in every single area of our lives. I want us to all just pray right now. I want us to pray. And I want us to ask the Lord where am I hidden in darkness? Where have I come into agreement with deception? Where 
Do I need your light to flood in into my life? Let him show you. Let him show you. Father, speak to us. We need the truth of your light, Lord. We need you, Lord, to reveal to us the hidden places. We need your fire to be serious about extinguishing these things in our lives, about totally removing them from our lives. We need your light. Somebody tell them, I, I choose not to flow from the frequency of a foreign voice. A foreign voice I will not follow. A different message from the message of my father I will not follow. But I seek to follow you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We come into the light. We come into the light. We come into the light, Jesus. Speak to our hearts, Lord. We come into your light. Come on, what are the hidden sins? The things that we might see as small. The hidden small sin that we think, oh, that's not such a big deal. Even just a little bit, even opening the door a little bit to darkness. It doesn't just want a little bit, it's coming to kill, steal, and destroy. And we declare that we will not allow it to do so in our lives. Where are the hidden things? The quiet things? Let's get rid of them now. Let's ask the light to flood into them now. Jesus, we need your light. Show us, Lord. Show us, Lord. Open our eyes to the places that we've allowed a different message to rule our lives. That we've allowed the small sin to come and spoil our vine like little foxes. Open our eyes, Lord Jesus. Oh. Oh, Jesus, we need you. Thank you, Lord. Maybe there's someone here and you have never even crossed over into the kingdom of light. You've been in darkness and you lived your life in darkness and you see the exposure happening and you want to make the decision today to choose light, to choose life, you have the opportunity today to choose it. Don't live your life in darkness that leads to destruction. Don't choose to live your life flowing from the voice of the enemy, hidden and destroyed. I'm telling you right now, the, the reason why you have no peace is because you've not allowed to light, the light to flow in. I just, I, I'm hearing that in the spirit. Somebody is like, oh, I just need peace. I need peace. There's nowhere I can find peace. There is no peace for the wicked. You will not find it in darkness. You will not find it in wickedness. If you're looking for peace, come to the Prince of Peace. If you're looking for love, come to the God who is love. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You cannot have the truth if you're not following the way. You will not know the way if you're not following the truth. You cannot be led to life if you're not following the way that is the truth. We need him in every area of our life. And so if you're saying today, I want to surrender. I want to be transformed from, delivered from the kingdom of darkness and over into the kingdom of the sun of light. I want you to raise your hand. Today is the day to come into the light of the Lord. If you say to yourself, I'm not saved, but I know I want my life to be saved. I want to give my life over to Jesus. Just lift your hands. Today is the day to give it all to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. And maybe you are, you have chosen Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, but you, you're living your life in darkness. You're not living your life in a way that says that he truly is Lord of your life. And you wanna give him the right to be Lord. Maybe you're backslidden. Your life is not in connection to him. Let us choose him today. If you would say, I know I need to choose the Lord. I know I've been tripping. I know I've been disconnected from him. And I don't wanna continue to live my life in disconnection to him. You can come to him today. He said, all who come to me, all who come to me, he's bidding you to come. Come to me, all who are heavy. Come to me, all who are oppressed in their sin. Come to me. If you're choosing today that you want to come, I want you to just lift your hand. Lift your hand and show the Lord, Lord, I want to come. I need to come to you. Amen. I see that hand. If you just lift your hand, don't wait any longer. This is a time of grace. It's a time of mercy. But there's coming a time where if you choose darkness, you will not be able to choose light. There's coming a time where the choice to choose darkness is total separation from the Lord, total destruction for all eternity. And the Lord does not want that for your life. He does not take any pleasure in the death of the wicked. If you know that if you die today, you would not even be in connection to God, but you'd be separated him from all eternity. Come today, lift your hand, lift your hand and say, Lord, I need to come. I see those hands, praise the Lord. I see those hands. And maybe for some of you, you've been trying to live your life for God. You've been trying to seek him and walk with him, but you've been having such a difficult time. You need the power from on high. There is a gift that the Lord has given us, his name, is the Holy Spirit and he wants to come. He is light. He will flood your life and fill your life with the light and the truth of the Lord. If you wanna be baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, I want you to lift your hand. He, he, he gives his gift of the Spirit freely. Hallelujah. And then if anyone, you want to join this church, we welcome you to join us. You are family, we love you, we will receive you and our pastors will help to raise you in the Lord. I want you to lift your hand if you want to join this church, if you would like to make Linked Up Church your church home, Linked Up Church. Thank you so much, I see those hands. Well, I would love for everyone to stand to their feet. Everyone stand to your feet. And for those of you who lifted your hands, I want you to come on down to the altar. Come on down to the altar, let's celebrate them. If you lifted your hand, Come and meet me here. Come and meet me here. Thank you. Come and meet me here at the altar. Come to the light. Hallelujah, Jesus. We come into the light. We come into the light. We come, light. We come oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Young lady. from the enemy. God said he saw the way that he's been destroying you. And today is the day that you are choosing life. We're closing every door. We're closing every door. Lift your hands. I want you to lift your hand. In the mighty name of Jesus, I destroy the works of the enemy off of your life. Come off of her in the mighty name of Jesus. Come off in Jesus' name. Another way, another way that the light rushes in is that it attacks every hidden trauma. Every hidden trauma. Sometimes the actions in our life, the fruit of darkness in our life come from the darkness of the trauma that others have done to us. But I'm here to tell you that the light even pierces trauma. The light even pierces trauma. It can even heal those hidden places. It floods into the darkness of our trauma, the darkness of those heavy places. Even that's not an excuse for the Lord. He can do it. 
He can heal us even in those areas. And he's doing it in Jesus' name for all of you. I want us to lift our hands. Lift up your hands. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's doing it for you too. I see that so much healing coming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Rabaya, you, you already know you're called. The Lord said he's calling you and you need to walk and be the light that he's calling you to be. There are things that he is calling you to do and they need to be released. It is so important for them to be released. No longer can you hide away. This is the time that you have to operate and walk in who he says that you to be. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Heal her, Lord, that you may use her. Heal her that you may use her. Deliver her that you may use her. Let her walk in the freedom of your light in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, man. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome, thank you even for more of you who've come to the altar. This is the time. This is the time. Oh, Rabbi, say, I just feel healing. Anybody who needs healing in the mighty name of Jesus, be healed in Jesus' name. That's how easy it is for the light. It just comes, it pierces, and you're healed. So if you need healing, anybody in your body, I feel the light of the Lord wanting to flood this room. Lord, I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus that we don't just get exposed by the light, we don't just get illuminated, but we become it. And I stand here as a light declaring healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So I want you guys to lift up your hands here. And I want you to say, Father, Thank you. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ. That you allowed him to die on the cross so that I could be free from my sin and forgiven of my sin. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your son, Jesus, as my Lord and as my savior because he got up in, on day three I choose now, I choose life in Jesus' name. And I invite you to be my Savior and my Lord for the rest of my life. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Come on, somebody rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. There's no condemnation. I'm hearing that in the spirit. There's no condemnation for us in Christ. What you did the days before this moment, they are erased, they are canceled, they are dead, they are gone. And you are walking as a new creation in the Lord so long as you choose his light daily. He'll show you the areas where there needs to be more light to flood in. Allow him to do so. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You guys can follow Amani's beautiful self right here with the Bible. You can follow her. She's going to take you to altar call room and she'll explain more about the decisions that you've made today. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Maybe some of you, there might be, have been anybody in here and you didn't feel comfortable coming up here. It's not too late, you can get, jump in the line. However, you can also use this beautiful Connect card. Please fill out your information. We want to help walk you through truly, truly choosing the Lord. So if you did not come up here, but you knew oh, there's something in my heart, and you, you chose to lean away from the light, that's okay. Fill out the card, and we would love to connect with you. Um, you can also fill it out online. There's an online link as well. You can fill that out as well. Am I missing anything else? All right. Well, praise the Lord. I thank you guys so much for receiving that message. I pray in Jesus' name that you choose light in every area, that you lean into the light in every area of your life, and that you become the light so that you can expose the lies and the hidden darkness in this world, that light would rush in this place, and we would display the truth of the kingdom of the Lord. Amen. 
Can we give a great hand clap to Minister Eliza? Let there be light. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. You all may be seated. So much powerful things. She asked the question, where have you consented to give the enemy access to your life? I wrote this down. You're either flowing from the frequency of the Father or flowing from the frequency of a foreign invader. If you receive the light, you will reflect the light. So much, so much, so much in that. Were you blessed today? Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hey, listen, I have the awesome privilege to say it is blessing time. It is offering time. Can you give God praise for that? Thank you so much for watching our online service. We certainly don't take that for granted. And if you enjoyed today's message and you want to get connected with us, we encourage you to become a part of our online community. That's right. And you can do that by subscribing to our YouTube channel, sharing this video with a friend and following us on social media. Don't forget to meet us right here on this channel every Sunday for our services. If you desire to help us reach more people just like yourself and advance the kingdom of God, then click the Give button now. This will allow us to connect more people to God, their families, their purpose, and their communities. Thank you again for watching our service on today, and we'll, we'll see, see you next week. week.